Okay, um, well, Glenn wanted to know more about our history in this town, specifically my history in this town, to start with, because my family's been here starting in Tilson since 1955. And so I've been here off and on since 55. I got out to the Redwood country in, in June of 1967, I graduated from Our Lady of Lords High School, and I got on a trailways bus the next day, swearing never to return. And in the interim, I got to live in New York City, in Greenpoint, back before Greenpoint was cool, um, in Boston, and eventually ended up out in Berkeley in Santa Cruz for a little time down in Santa Barbara. So I, got, I was out in Reb's country and never met Reb that entire time. And then after 10 years, I came back dragging my tail between the legs after a busted marriage and um, a great deal of other trauma to help raise two of my younger cousins who were from Greenpoint. They were coming up here to go to school. And I was ready to be someplace other than where I was anyway. Um, and I got back here in 77 or 78 and although I didn't get involved in it, that was just in time for the start of the Rosendale Street Festival. My friend Hallie Hammer, who denies being one of the founders, but she was one of the founders. And um, she's now back out in Berkeley. But from in 78, 79, 80, they had a street festival here. And then after 80, it was 15 years. And in 95, when it was revived, I just happened to see a notice in the Rosendale Cafe of a meeting to revive the Rosendale Street Festival. And since this is my hometown, and this was happening in my backyard, um, I wanted to get involved because having lived in Boston, Berkeley, and New York, I'd seen street festivals that became looted or vandalized by predators, you know, because you start a nice grassroots organization and sooner or later predators move in. And Reb's had her own experiences with grassroots organizations. And in another sense, I've been organizing things since the 60s, starting with um, protest marches and things of that sort, of course, although I didn't really think about it until years later. A little bit of concert organizing, even back then, you know, but just like organizing the groups who played at the college, who were all college students. <coughs> um, and I made the fatal bureaucratic mistake of, I went to the first meeting, and then for the second meeting, I was scheduled to be on Nantucket, so I told them I wasn't going to be there. So I told them, put me on the music committee. Figuring that I would do some volunteer work on the music committee and in exchange I'd get to play the festival because I thought there should have been some old timers playing the festival. And Hallie Hammer had had me sit in with her for a couple of numbers of a 1980 street festival. And I came back from Nantucket and they had made me chair of music. So since at the time the relationship I was in was a long distance one, she was in New York <coughs> during the week and I was working up here uh, and I had plenty of time on my hands, I just figured that it was meant to be and I just took it and ran with it. And the first year we had three stages and 56 bands and the beginnings of a lot of controversy because I had gotten involved figuring that if it was a success within a few years, the wolves would try and move in and I'd be there. And what I didn't realize is that the wolves were some of the original organizers and that it was their tool to give themselves some credibility from which they wanted to move on and take over the Democratic Party in town. Meanwhile, doing things like keeping no books at all for the street festival. Um, and it took a lot of battling in the first year because the principal among them wanted to turn it into a two-stage competitive 
venture, strictly alternative rock. And I wanted to, the original street festival, which was, I mean, the original street festival had a deaf belly dancer named Hermina, because she was local, and because she would perform at the library festivals that they had back then. And Halley's view, Halley's view is as egalitarian as mine, and she organized the music, although she doesn't take credit for the entire festival. And I felt there should be something there for all members of a community. That in particular, this person didn't want cover bands. You know, well, when most people go to hear music, they want to hear music they're familiar with. You know, not to mention alternative rock is, is all well and good, but I don't want a steady diet of it. And I knew Rosendale wouldn't want a steady diet of it. And the Street Festival was a big success, and it did prove the springboard for them to take over the Democratic Party. But by that time, they had burned their bridges with the Street Festival. Um, and just some years, Las Vegas worked with me. Some years, Las Vegas did it instead of me. And then it went quiescent again from 1999 until 2005. And in 2005, we started meeting in 2004, and we met for about 16 months before that festival in 2005. And once again, there was a great deal of internal politics and internal hassling. Um, but without ever really setting out to, I, I have this huge independent streak where I don't, didn't, never did care about getting any credit for the street festival, but it wasn't why I did it. I did it because this is my hometown and because we give back. That's what Rev and I have done separately our entire lives, and we've done it together, continually. You know, Rev's always been involved in politics, right, Rev? Mm-hmm. Some, some kind of political action or another, and for a long time it was um, pretty much focused on the environment, but back in the 60s, which gives my age away, um, it was civil rights and um, the war in Vietnam, and then it became heavily the environment, but of course all the other things that are wrong with the world. Um, yeah, we, I'd like to do more, uh, and maybe through music we will be able to do more, writing songs about causes and singing with Voices for Peace, but you know, maybe there'll be some more opportunities in the future. If we get our life together here, <laughs> get a house to live in, <laughs> a few things like that, you know. Now, I've had the opportunity, and Reb's been part of the latter portion of this, to, we're both very fond of the Old Songs Festival up in Altamont, and I had gotten the opportunity in, back in 2000 to do a folk festival called the Mid-Hudson Folk Festival down in Poughkeepsie, which is the first time Rev ever saw me. And uh, it was one of those things that was a critical su success and a financial failure. It was done as a fundraiser, and the group that it was supposed to, that it was supposed to raise funds for failed to send out John McCutcheon's mailing list. We prepared the mailing, had it all stamped ready to go, and they decided to save a little money. At, and that was the entire marketing strategy, was we got his mailing list for $71 of some 6,000 names with fans who normally travel two or three states to, in order to see him. And we had his only concert in New England. Unfortunately, it was the same weekend as, as Falcon Ridge as well. Um, but anyway, that was a three-stage folk festival in 2001. One was a workshop stage, one was an open mic stage. And then last year, with Reb working with me, um, we got to found the Rosendale Homegrown Folk Festival, and I hope we get to do it again this year. Yeah, we were planning on doing that folk festival. That was a lot of fun. It wasn't that much work. It was mostly fun. At least from my standpoint, it wasn't that much work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I liked the format. We had a lot of stages going, and 
Um, there you go, rocking the rocking chair again. Um, the um, workshop stages were fun. We had a, a rabble rousing workshop stage. That was the one I participated in. We had protest songs from all different genres and um, talks about protest songs and political songs. That was fun. We had a young people's um, folk uh, workshop, which was called the Whatever Workshop, because that young people don't like to call anything by a well, name. Folk. It was alt folk, garage folk, what and whatever folk. grunge folk, whatever folk. <coughs> and what other workshops did we have? I know there was it? another. I <coughs> know there was there another one, and I don't remember what workshop. it was. Well, yes, you did a women's women in song workshop, and you did. Well, a we didn't do the women in song workshop, but we plan to do that next year. We have right. all all women songwriters, and uh, that should be fun. There's, there's already lines of people wanting to be in on that one. It's going to be very difficult to decide who gets in, um, but it should be fun. And there was an open mic stage, and that's one of the reasons yes. that we like um, old songs, although they, don't have a, they only have an hour and a half dedicated open mic. <clears throat> they do have a jamming stage. Have you been up to old songs? No. Well,